Tak dengar. Hello semua, dengar tak? Dengar tak? Dengar tak dengar? Dengar? Dengar, dengar. Dengar. Boleh? Okay, alright. Sekejap, sekejap, sekejap. Okay. Um, untuk topik... Um, Seterusnya adalah topik berkaitan dengan uh, crop production iaitu uh, crop care, penjagaan tanaman. So, uh, topik ni uh, penting ya uh, dalam uh, pengeluaran uh, tanaman ya for crop production. Okay. So, um, I did pass to you the the task for group uh, task. So, I hope you are able to see the the your time uh, in uh, <laughs> Doktor, doktor mute ke? Oh, okay. Alright, boleh dengar? Okay, so uh, these are the three, uh, the most common application for the crop care uh, in agriculture field. Uh, sorry, uh, sekejap eh. Dengar tak suara saya? Atau bunyi bising ke macam mana? Jelas, jelas doktor. Jelas, jelas eh? Okay, alright, perfect. So I just want to make sure that my recording is uh, good, ya? Yeah? All right, um, so these are the, uh, the function of the sprayer. If you take a look, uh, the sprayer by right, uh, normally it should be based on the liquid form. Yeah, we're talking about the sprayer liquid form. So the function of it uh, uh, basically uh, be able to break the fluids yeah, into very fine size. When I say very fine, uh, it could be uh, uh, from moderate uh, from cost very cost to very fine yeah so uh, very fine here just uh, the example of that yeah okay and then to be able to control the rate of application or the application rate so that the application is not excessive especially in oil palm in plantation in paddy or in any crop basically we do have the recommended rate yeah pembajaan racu kaedah meracun, pemajaan dan sebagainya. So, pada produk tu, kita ada kadar bancuhan yang telah ditetapkan. Okay. So, that will not be excessive. If there is excessive, so the consequences could be to the crops and also to the environment or to the operator. Yeah. The sun secara tak langsung adalah segi bahaya. Uh, burn to the leaf. Yeah. Uh, terbakar, kesan terbakar pada tanaman and also the environmental degradation they akan membunuh um, uh, for in case of uh, dangerous pesticide non organic so you will kill all the basically non uh, uh, dangerous uh, pesticide to the uh, pests you know, pests and disease to the plants yeah so we don't want that we try to be harmony as the best as possible 
and then uh, of course the third one uh, the the sprayer by right should apply a uniform uh, application yeah uniform when i say uniform is seragam ya yeah? seragam pada semua profile tanaman dan uh, selain daripada application dari tadi kita dah uh, baju okay and then uh, bila kita dah baju we, we mix together and then when we during the application the uniformity is very important so uniformity depend on the uh, extrinsic and also intrinsic uh, factors so intrinsic factors for example the system uh, semburan uh, sebagai contoh pemilihan nozzle uh, nozzle tekanan uh, pipe jenis liquid dan sebagainya extrinsic contoh uh, yang kita tak boleh kawal contoh cuaca angin drift dan sebagainya okey yang tu kita tak boleh nak control okey alright uh, the other function is to have a sufficient droplet yeah spray sufficient droplet size that can be wet on the this surface okay so this is general basically so it depends on the type of um, chemical that we use either bio based or non bio based yeah, product non bio based product so the uh, the droplet can be uh, efficient or not efficient at all depend on the products and then uh, some of the product basically uh, kita kalau uh, if there is pesticide or uh, fungicide is contact yeah or we call it systemic yeah in this case uh, you don't need to be uh, uh, critical uh, or uniform uh, so that's is basically uh, as long as it touched by the by the plant so it should be sufficient yeah all right so uh, here's are the example of the equipment there are many more equipments yeah so in the assignment to gasan by group uh, so you will list down the equipment that maybe is not listed here, here or additional uh, than more than what I, I i'm going to show you here okay so equipment can be uh, manual or it can be automatic or semi automatic by the machine so this is by principle so we already learned topic number 1 or 2 of the subject yeah uh, so that would be the um uh, on the uh, power usage either by human animal or machine so in this case we do have the animal but very rare in particular in malaysia yeah but for the spraying uh, animal um, we try to avoid because uh, the chemical is going to kill the animal so we, we try to to not to use animal for crop care yeah uh, human power uh, because we have a protective measures yeah using a uh, uh, cabin uh, mask and so on yeah um, so these are the example okay the sprayer basically a piece of equipment that use tank okay so basic principle you know the reservoir water reservoir and also liquid reservoir kita ada hose untuk uh, salurkan okey uh, liquid dan juga keluarkan pada penghujung nozzle okey ada tiga komponen utama okey uh, tangki hose dan nozzle okey dan untuk menghasilkan tekanan uh, dia berbeza sama ada kaedah manual pump okey diaphragm pump ataupun kaedah putaran menggunakan PTO pada sektor okey that's the principle of that Okay, speaking of the type of uh, crop care, so the crop care can divide it into uh, a few categories. Yeah, uh, first is the plant input. Yeah, crop input, which is uh, for controlling the nutrient and also pH, soil pH, uh, controlling the weeds, okay, uh, disease and also insects. Yeah, right. Uh, so in general, uh, for fertilizer. Uh, three type of uh, application can be done. First, depend on the type of uh, uh, shape of, uh, well, uh, I would say um, the form of fertilizer. It can be in the form of liquid, in the form of uh, granular. So it, it can be in the form of powder, yeah, powdery. Um, so a powdery is very rare to be used. Normally broadcast in granular, or it can be in liquid, okay, in method of uh, foliar spray or bioorganic, uh, or you can have also uh, in case of localized, you can have a granular or uh, in powder. Yeah, powder. Kalau uh, if in uh, rice production, so we apply silica 
and other uh, micro and uh, in this case for fertilizer so normally it's evenly spread over entire field yeah so on the soil okay uh, or it can be mixed into the plow layers by means of tillage so we have seen this during our exercise in lab number five where we did the um, the fill fill uh, efficiency calculation and broadcast mostly appropriate when the large amount of fertilizer is being applied. So this is where you can see most of the plant, most of the palm plantation use a broadcast, yeah, where, whereby the broadcasting techniques mostly targeting the uh, inter palm uh, row, which is where the front heap uh, where is collected. Yeah, di tengah tengah, bukan di laluan tractor ya, yeah? di antara uh, timbunan uh, pelepah sawit ya. Yeah? whereby that's actually the location where most of the organic matter decompose uh, and then most of the biota will be applied and then we would anticipate that is better for nutrient world uh, holding capacity or water holding capacity to retain the moisture rather than being washed away by the rain or damaged by the mechanical um, tractors yeah all right um so um uh, in terms of the localized uh, placement, so this is where um, uh, targeted uh, placement where we can put a strategy to need to reduce the loss of uh, nutrient. So in particular, we reduce amount of contact between soil particle and fertilizer nutrient. Thus, you will basically in, in indirectly um, uh, supply um, continuous uh, slow release fertilizer as well as uh, long-term uh, fertilization. So in uh, oil palm, uh, in particular, for example, how many times you apply fertilizer? Anyone would like to share? Anyone? How many times you apply fertilizer in oil palm plantation? Per, season, per year? Two kali. Two kali. Yeah. Two times, okay. Another answer, anyone? Numb. How many times? Numb, okay. Maggie? Anyone? So it's just discussion. So basically it varies from one plantation to another. Uh, either it's from small holder or big company or corporate company. It depends on the plantation, uh, planters practice, yeah? But most of them, uh, if they have the uh, restriction or difficulties to have the access for the labor, so it goes like uh, twice a year, two times uh, per year, or it could go up to six, like your friend just mentioned just now. So uh, more replication, uh, more uh, frequent fertilizer uh, application. So per year basis, you have 12 months, 12 months so the, uh, every two months you apply, which is much better uh, in terms of the absorption of the plants, readiness for the plants to uptake nutrient, reduce the losses. But in, 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 uh, in contrast, uh, basically you are going to have uh, a lot more cost for the labor. But if the farmer is basically doing by machine, uh, which is a lot faster and also more efficient, that will probably uh, beat the cost because uh, right now the the cost for um for FFB price uh, not the cost yeah FFB price is about one thousand ringgit per ton FFB price so more or less actually uh, farmers can get minimum a month like ten thousand uh, a month so basically that's actually good money to to have some uh, recycle and then so program for fertilizer because fertilizer in oil pump. Uh, it takes up more than 70% of the total cost of production. Yeah, um, In Malaysia, the cost, uh, the cost itself for one ton CPO produced is about between, uh, it used to be like 1,000, 1,500, but right now it's about uh, 1,007 or 1,000, 1,800, something like that, close, close to 2,000, even some area already reached 2,500. So it depends on the input yeah, they use. Okay, so um, 
uh, other than that, basically you can have also a four-year application, for example, like simple with a host. Uh, you can also have, a, of course, a, with a fancy machine uh, uh, with a tractor to dilute in the tank. Yeah. Uh, in in addition to that, if you have the orchards, yeah, tanaman buah-buahan, uh, durian, belimbing, dan sebagainya, mango, yeah, sekarang musim harum manis, yeah, di kedah perlis sebagainya. Uh, for the big orchards, so um, we learn about the field capacity already. So if you use manual, so in one day, it's very limited acreage that you could cover. But with the tractors, you go with one uh, within half day, within a few hours, you get the job done faster. And plus, basically, it's much more efficient. Yeah. All right. So um, I don't want to go detail in terms of the, the type of the uh, fertilizer, but this is where information that you can take a look and then read, yeah? But most important here, most of the equipment that we are going to use uh, is depend on the type of um, type of uh, liquid or form of uh, input that we use, yeah? If there is powder, so you cannot use next tax spray. You have to use uh, maybe a sand, uh, maybe kind of like a sand blaster, something like that. Uh, or blaster, you can have an exit sprayer in terms of the powder, yeah? Um, so uh, that's basically a key, a key point that I want to mention in this slide, yeah? So application of equipment is uh, equipment to use, uh, used to apply fertilizer, pesticide, growth regulator, and so on. Um, so uh, the next step is to have a calibration procedure uh, to be sure that the equipment that deliver at the right amount at the right uh, usage uh, uh, of uh, of uh, chemical, yeah. So um, the equipment listed here, uh, for example, like a Nitrex sprayer, boom sprayer, pressure sprayer, or duster. Okay, this is a high clearance sprayer. Um, very rare to see in Malaysia, but uh, in abroad they use a lot for uh, corn planting. Um, and then some of the application, basically, they uh, they uh, already integrated with a center pivot. Yeah, center pivot uh, irrigation. You know, tengok center pivot. Okay, kalau buka uh, website di uh, Google, yeah, uh, um, you can search center pivot. P I V O T. Okay, center pivot. Uh, bentuk dia bulat ya. Yeah? So dia ada center uh, untuk source of water daripada ground water. So dia akan sedut dan boleh campur sekali dengan baja ataupun uh, chemical untuk uh, crop protection lah. Uh, sekarang uh, center pivot famous ya yeah? digunakan untuk aquifer uh, uh, plantation di uh, di Dubai ya yeah? di Dubai Saudi pun ada di tanah pasir ya yeah? so dia orang ambil air daripada aquifer bawa tanah so tanam uh, makanan lah so don't be surprised uh, uh, that they are able to do that ya yeah? just with water we need water for for life ya yeah? water is for everything alright um, so as for the weed control, uh, so the weed uh, can be controlled by chemical, um, by mechanical, which is no chemical, uh, field cultivator, for example, that's by mechanical. Uh, and then, <coughs> excuse me, um, and then also by the uh, a few equipment that can help with that, with an exact sprayer and also for weed tractor or uh, using air blaster, yeah? Okay, this is the example. Uh, alternative to uh, chemical, you can also have the uh, plastic mulch to control. Okay, um, I think uh, I saw the latest invention. Uh, I don't know whether it's practice or not in Malaysia, but in Japan, they use the same uh, concept here, plastic mulch, to grow paddy field, to grow paddy, yeah, in paddy field using machine. So uh, having said that, I think it's uh, one of the good approach in reducing the, the cost for the wheat. But you got to use the uh, transplanter machine. Yeah, you can use manual, but it's quite uh, it's going to be too laborious. Yeah, uh, the risk is there for the cost of labor if you use a manual. But with the help of machine, you can integrate those application. Okay, to reduce the uh, the wheat. Yeah. Uh, by mechanical means, so you can take a look. Uh, you just search on Google uh, mechanical weeder. So dia akan menggabungkan tanah uh, selain daripada baris uh, baris tanaman. Okay. So by using time. So kita dah belajar topik nombor lima, jenis-jenis uh, 
uh, tillage uh, dan ada satu kategori iaitu untuk uh, gemukan tanah iaitu cultivator ya yeah. so another uh, type is uh, time uh, macam lidi lah okay, that you have to eliminate the weeds ya yeah. small weeds ya yeah. uh, another uh, aspect you can have also nitrogen sprayer uh, with uh, Uh, manual application or motorized yes gabas sebelah kiri itu is motorized so farmers basically doing uh, their their own invention uh, by having uh, four nozzles in one row okay in one path so another one is uh, doing next set uh, manual sprayer yeah so uh, how much uh, the fuel efficiency do you think uh, using manual sprayer how much per day that you can cover anyone would like to share berpeka berapa hektar ataupun ya yeah, we already talk about fuel efficiency right so what is like the efficiency for uh, next tech sprayer for manual anyone would like to share as compared to tractor what do you think okay so uh, i leave it to you yeah you, you can find it and in the literature and so on so these are the uh, the important key points once you know the fuel efficiency uh, capacity of the operation so you would anticipate the um, the numbers of workers the target days of operation to complete the task and also uh, uh, choosing the right equipment for uh, targeted time yeah All right. So, uh, in addition to that, uh, of course, uh, you can have also uh, a tractor with the help of hydraulic sprayer. Uh, either it can be hydro pneumatic sprayer, can be in the form of a blower. It can also in term of the aerosol generator. Yeah. Here, uh, some of the example that we use a lot in Malaysia, uh, uh, other than drone. Yeah. Uh, so uh, maybe group number berapa? number one, I think, uh, that review the. Uh, the tool that used for the spraying, you can have an uh, uh, example using drone uh, later on in your report, in your uh, task. Yeah? So uh, you can see some of the issue here in, on the safety aspect yeah? using uh, this uh, manual or semi-manual equipment. So uh, this is the real, uh, I'm, I'm not, uh, this is not a joke yeah? because of the chemical actually exposed to the workers. So uh, this is the real, uh, Um, problem in in our industry right now so we should actually uh, reduce the dependency on the foreign labor and also go for more uh, systematic and also safe equipment such as drone so uh, one of the research that i did basically on rice production for the drone uh, we actually tested uh, for the the drone spraying so make sure that actually uh, the the spraying basically um, according to the standard and also follow the recommendation. So, of course, we uh, minimize the exposure of the chemical to the operator. And then you can see that um, the efficiency also is much more uh, faster. So, with the drone, you can get about four hectare per hour. So, with manual, it's about one over fourth of that. Yeah, four times faster than a manual using drone. Yeah, manual I means using knapsack sprayer. So much more efficient using drone because you can cover more uniform and then a lot more area that can be covered. So I hope group one later on can review those topics and also give some uh, um, sharing knowledge yeah, for your friends tomorrow. All right, uh, so this is a hydraulic sprayer. Um, I don't know, you can go to detail later on, yeah, on your own. Um, so basically, we can attach to the tractors okay using pump that running through a pto normally the pump is a diaphragm pump okay the tank is for the mixing and also a few valve uh, uh, control valve for for the uh, mixing for the bypass and so on yeah uh, that is a standard uh, pressure gauge uh, for us to check the pressure in the tank so to make sure that there is no leaking in terms of the pressure for the tank and make sure that the nozzle that supply the chemical is uniform for the uh, sprayer yeah application okay another one is uh, tractor mounted and tadi tak ada tayar ya eh? di sini we don't have a tire but is pulled by the three point hitch okay anything that you 
you don't find the wheel normally is pulled by the uh, sort of like a trailer type to the uh, connect to the tractor using a, um, what you call that the drawbar power. Okay, just pull. Okay, of course there is safety harness on that too. Yeah, and all the components basically listed here. However, in this case, uh, we do have here in, in TPU. So if you have a chance, inshallah. Okay, I don't know whether we can have another or not. But uh, if we don't have a case anymore for COVID nineteen, so we should have a ample time to review. But uh, normally the sprayer is, is at the back. Yeah, you can see at the back from the left. Uh, right side, you can see turbine that going to push the wind and also the liquid spray by the boom nozzle, yeah, towards the end of the, the trees. So it's all the coverage, okay, while moving forward. So it will cover by the full coverage, yeah, the plants. So this is a example of the, the direction. You can actually turn off or turn on the valve opening, yeah, and depend on your target angle, yeah. So uh, if it is good actually if you have the orchards especially yeah so four spray pattern can be delivered by the sprayer so this picture taken by John Deere uh, books yeah all right uh, so as for the outputs um, uh, the uh, of course uh, the target spray depend on the angle target angle so uh, recommended is on the A uh, recommended spray distribution for the A plus uh, for orchard three. However, if there is non-uniformity non needed, so basically you can go with a B, where each nozzle spray uh, at the same rate, and this vision can be changed for the fruits to protect. Yeah? And those basically, uh, those nozzles, basically we can access the quality of the sprayer by having water safety paper. Yeah? So uh, if the droplet is size is big, so meaning that you uh, you you have used uh, more volume of water, yeah. So that's why uh, when we do calibration, normally we will take a look uh, what will be like uh, in terms of the droplet size. Then we can actually estimate what would be the the flow rate. Yeah. Uh, normally the target is between eighty five to hundreds. Yeah. Um, micro um, millimeter per centimeter square area. That's the size that we want, okay? And uh, in terms of the equipment for the pump, so it can be a centrifugal piston pump, diaphragm pump, cutaway views, uh, all silver, all necessary flow rate at desired pressure, yeah? Okay, this is diagram, so I don't want to go detail, um, but uh, what we want to concern, uh, want to focus is basically, what concern is is basically the system uh, from the jet agitator that using the mix up of the liquid and also until pressurized to the boom section where is deliver all the liquid yeah three section okay uh, so this is the equipment that normally we use for um, exercise in uh, TPU yeah so kita the boom sprayer uh, small uh, tractors okay pull the machine and then deliver to uh, a few set of nozzle. Yeah, and also you can have the option using uh, animal power. Of course, I don't think this is a chemical liquid. I think uh, uh, it's a bio uh, pesticide. If not, that would be dangerous for the animal. Yeah. Okay. For the tractor mounted, it's normally is fitted uh, with a lens um, uh, by the workers. Okay. Uh, so this is on the safe uh, the procedure. Yeah. And then uh, uh, a lot more simple procedure you can find on the uh, literature and so on. Um, but of course, um, the, the, the pressurized can be delivered by the PTO. Yeah? So this is the example of the sprayer just now that I show you. Another one is a mist sprayer, uh, simple, uh, but also effective yeah? to, um, to spray all the orchards yeah? with the uh, chemical yeah? or uh, Fertilizer, yeah. Um, okay, this is the most common design that we use for weedy side. Okay, munurumpai, and also for uh for sprayer uh of the uh, vegetable, yeah, especially for lower than uh, two feet height, yeah. So we can use a tractor, and semi manual sprayer. Uh, you can you use a lot this one, yeah. In uh, uh you can see a lot in even in oil pump. 
even durian right now use this machine as well. So this machine can be one of the um, uh, list yeah in your class uh, project. Yeah. Okay, crop duster. Uh, yang ni jarang kat tak di kat Malaysia. Kat Malaysia kita ada uh, kapal terbang untuk collect air. Yeah. Sebab ramai jika lawa ada jerebu dan sebagainya uh, pembakaran terbuka. Tapi jarang. Yeah. Sekarang dah ada uh, jarang. Yeah. Uh, kebanyakan di luar negara masih lagi menggunakan uh, aerial application. Yeah, that's a, we call it duster. Um, okay. So alternatively, gambar bawah tu, uh, you can have sort of a trailer and separate pump system. So it, meaning that you didn't use utilize, you, you didn't utilize the power from the tractor, but it's standalone uh, power. But the tractor just meant to carry the tank, yeah, uh, and then uh, the sprayer by a single hose pulled by the uh, operator. So meaning that this one you got to have uh, one or two operators. Di tadi dia ada tangki di atas trailer. Uh, di mana uh, sorang macam uh, uh, power washer yang you pergi basuh kereta atau motosikal di kedai tu. So that set basically you put on the trailer running on their own machine and then the, the tractor pull dragging all the farm, all, all the area. So is this more efficient uh, if you have a limitation in terms of the cost? Yeah. All right. Uh, this is the uh, calculation, some example, yeah, how to calculate the horsepower of the pump. So if you want to decide what is like the formula to calculate the pump power, so you need to know the uh, Q, the flow rates, and, uh, and also the pressure divided by the efficiency, and also the factors of 17, uh, 1,714 yeah, in horsepower you need. So you can take also the efficiency at the lower speed percent, so you can get the horsepower requirement. Yeah. Q is uh, flow rate in gallon per minute. Yeah, so uh, that's for the pump power. And uh, for the flow rate for the nozzle is depend factors. Uh, you can see from the formula, uh, depend on the flow rates uh, and also pressure, uh, V, and also the speed and also W. In the W is the, uh, I think the uh, the nozzle spacing uh, is in inches. Yeah, is correct. Yeah, spacing between nozzle. Yeah. Okay, so here is the example of the uh, uh, spraying pattern okay? uh, for herbicide, fungicide, and insecticide. So mostly in agriculture that we use uh, for uh, tractors mounted, normally it's flat type, flat fan. Yeah? You can find uh, any type of flat and extended range, standard drift cut, can have a twin fan, uh, twin uh, flat fan. So these are the example of good to very good uh, uh, choose of the nozzle or spraying pattern for all the uh, pesticide application. Yeah. Um, some others actually very rare that we use uh, some wide angle, uh, some uh, in the raindrop, hollow cone, um, and also full spectrum. That's very rare. Yeah. Okay. So. I don't have a better picture. Maybe next time I will have it. Okay, in terms of the compartment of the nozzle. Yeah? Kalau kita buka uh, nozzle tu, komponen dalam dia, dia ada body, cap, strainer, ada filter, yeah, strainer, and interchangeable uh, fan spray tip yang di hujung tu. Spray tip ni, dia ada uh, banyak jenis. Yeah? Dia ada uh, made of composite, dia made of plastic, made of uh, copper or steel. Yeah? The most uh, durable is composite, but it's quite expensive. Yeah, the filter and strainer need to clean uh, prior to the each uh, application, spraying application. Okay, can I brush it? Okay, so this is the pressure gauge. Okay, example of the nozzle that inter interchangeable that you can uh, uh, change according to the needs. Yeah, okay, the, so the target is at the bottom. Yeah. All right, so uh, the different angle of the spraying, uh, you can have a white a flat uh, spray, even the flat spray or tapered edge. Yeah. So all this basically the design of uh, bentuk um, uh, spraying ni adalah bergantung kepada pemilihan nozzle. Yeah. All right, uh, so uh, during our lab exercise tomorrow, uh, we'll take a look. Okay, what will be like 
to have a good sphere. What is the consequences? Okay, for example, uh, from the top view, you can see here the shape of the sprayer for each set, start, satu nozzle. Yeah? So, by right, actually, dia akan ada bentuk oval yang cantik lah. Okay, bentuk oval yang selain daripada dua tu, di tengah dan sebelah kanan tu adalah tidak selagam. Yeah? Meaning that there is non-uniformity, there is something wrong with the nozzle. Dia tidak dapat um, menyalurkan apa ni, bahan secara dengan secara seragam lah. So, meaning that uh, when we do calculation, so when we do calibration out of like, for example, 10 or 16 nozzle, uh, so we would like to calculate the CV. Okay, kita ambil flow rate dia berapa, kita measure setiap nozzle, kita ID kan dia 1 hingga 19. So, step satu nozzle tu, kita kira flow rate dia liter per minute, ataupun liter per second, whatever it is, flow rate. So, kita kira bacaan dia, and then kita compare, kita buat graph, uh, bar graph, and then tengok kita uh, apa, compare flow rate dia. So, in case, if you have a good tips of the nozzle, so by right actually CV uh, less than 6% is the best. Yeah. So kalau tengok tu, yang biru tu adalah air. Yeah? So meaning that you you would have a very uniform application. So the application rate also uh, same and also suitable. Yeah. So uh, the error will be really less. If you have a one out spray tips, ni yang hujung eh, yang spray tip yang yang keluar tu. So uh, the the probability that you have for the excessive application is very high. You can see here, <coughs> the CV is about 35%. Yeah, 35% is more than half of that. Yeah. So meaning that there is something wrong with the nozzle. Yeah. Um, so the recommend recommendation is to have less than 6% is the best. Yeah. Some of them basically go beyond more than uh, basically like less than 10 is uh, quite acceptable yeah because uh, to change with the new tips um, is quite expensive if that happened so basically the uh, the, the considerate value is about uh, 10 to 15 percent is still okay yeah and if you have a damage spray tips that would be uh, the trend on the right side so you can see the spray pattern is very uh, a broad change and then uh, non uniform. Yeah. So the consequences, uh, the one that we want to uh, discuss here is about the flow rates. Okay. The amount of liquid that you are going to apply. So if you have a very high amount of fertilizer, so basically it will affect your uh, fill efficiency or uh, we call it kebekasana ladang. So by right, actually, you already know. Uh, satu tangki ni boleh cover satu hektar. tiba-tiba bila kamu guna uh, uh, spray tip yang damage, okay, you will end up half tank, uh, not even half tank, uh, sorry, not even half hektar, you dah habis liquid dalam tu. So meaning that you actually spray more than required yeah, because of the excessive uh, spray tips. Yeah? So not efficient at all. Okay, so um, there is a suggestion suggestion for minimum spraying height. So total, um, uh, total, sorry, uh, I would say uh, the the suggested uh, distance height yeah, from the target is about um, 50 by 50. So 50, 50 centimeter height to 50 centimeter distance. Yeah. But this is where you, uh, when you use um, 100 degree flat spray, uh, and also using a typical sprayer on the boom boom platform, yeah. But if you use other mechanism like uh, uh, like um, uh, drone and sebagainya, so that will affect uh, different different, yeah, because of the downwash and so on. Angin itu, okay. All right. Uh, what is like uh, if you have the pressure effect? Okay. So you can see here uh, the liquid of the flow rates would increase uh, if you have the increase the pressure okay daripada satu bar okay gambar daripada yang atas tu uh, top left okay satu bar dengan 2.8 bar ataupun uh, bar dalam unit uh, SI ya yeah? ataupun 15 psi atau 40 psi versus 40 psi you can see the flow rate is increase per minute dan satu minute double ya yeah? as what you have from one bar 
Okay, so increase in target angle and pressure will increase the Q as well. Okay, kalau target angle kamu berubah daripada 90 hingga 110, dia punya volume air yang keluar pun lagi banyak. So logic thinking. Okay, boleh faham ya? So I hope this is clear now. Alright, uh, so here are the speed uh, uh, and also the uh, pressure related. Okay, proportionate. Yeah, so... Uh, ni contoh ya, saya buat graf ni uh, bagi contoh um, nozzle yang kamu pilih kamu akan dapat lihat uh, proportionate kalau berapa halaju dan pressure yang kamu akan dapat so here is the example speed katakan ini mile per hour eh. katakan kamu pergi 10 okay. so kamu boleh pilih berapa pressure yang kamu perlu uh, operate lah untuk nozzle tertentu setiap nozzle dia ada spec um, minimum pressure ya, tersendiri ya Alright, untuk calibration. Okay, uh, untuk pulang 4 ya. So, boleh tengok nota saya pun mungkin dah cukup ya. Uh, pulang 4. Uh, mungkin boleh tambah lah. Okay, untuk calibration, boom sprayer. Okay, so biasanya kita akan buat pemeriksaan dahulu untuk uh, boom sprayer. Kita measure tractor speed, flow rates dan spray calculation uh, for the volume. And also, then kita adjust spray volume if required. Kalau kita ada valve plus lagi, kita adjust lah. Then kalau spray tips yang berubah, uh, rosak dan sebagainya, kita boleh tukar. Ya. And then uh, lepas kita buat calibration, barulah kita buat preparation for the uh, tank mix. Boleh campur dengan uh, bahan racun dan sebagainya. Okay. So uh, this is uh, some of the equipment. Yeah. By right, actually, uh, besok, besok kalau kita buat tu kita akan ada checklist lah bahan-bahan uh, dan sebagainya. Yeah. So we, we can have uh, some checklist, uh, tank size, Hose, nozzle, boom, um, uh, cleanness, replacement, check lead leaking, agitation, pressure. Okay, this is uh, the example. So I took some of the slide from uh, European crop protection. So this is good uh, exercise for us. Yeah. So in order for us to measure the tractor speed, so I think this is where you can have uh, the uh, the measurement. Um, or you could also have some uh, um, your own uh, measured time, yeah. So measured time the speed is basically distance over time. So you can have that. Okay. Um, all right. So for calibration for the uh, spray nozzle, uh, so we normally would like to know the flow rates. Okay, the conversion factors is given the numbers of nozzles, okay, the width of the boom, and also the speed of the tank. So, uh, typical speed for the spraying is less than five kilometer per hour. Okay, life less than five kilometer per hour. Depend on the uh, on the uh, condition of the weather. If you spray in the morning, you could you could go up to uh, ten. Yeah. If during uh, very hot and sunny, so you want to reduce the drift. Yeah, so you must go slow as possible. So uh, by having this calculation, you would end up about 225 liter of liquid per hectare. Okay, so this is where you can estimate the spray volume per hectare. Okay, um, all right. So um, in terms of the adjustment that needed for the spraying cal calibration, so you can change the nozzle, okay? If the volume is too much, so you can go for the lower volume, for ultra low volume, uh, that would be the option. Or you can have the uh, uh, faster for the tractors, so adapt the tractor speed, yeah, uh, adjustment for the uh, tractor speed, yeah. Uh, or you can have uh, the adjustment for the pressure, small adjustment, so you can have low pressure for the low volume, yeah. Kalau laju, sangat. Uh, cepat boleh dapat kerja tapi uh, you boleh control speed as well. Okay. Um, so di sini contoh ya uh, untuk mengira uh, kadar alir per uh, per nozzle. Yeah? Per nozzle. So what you have here basically the speed which is already measured. Okay. Boom width measured. Target spray volume. Okay. Tangki kamu. Katakanlah kamu nak guna penuh satu tangki air. Nak penuhkan juga. 300 liter, for example. And then conversion factor, 600. 
open nozzle 48 pieces. Semua dalam satu boom tu kamu ada 48. So bila kira-kira tengok kamu dapat each spray nozzle mesti deliver 2 liter per minit. Okey, bila 2 liter per minit kita tengok dalam jadual pemilihan nozzle kita tengok jadual jadual mana yang boleh deliver 2 liter per minit. Okey, kalau kamu pilih um, uh, apa ni? Uh, pressure Pressure berapa tadi? Pressure tak ada. Okay. Pressure bar tu katakan tetap. Kamu pilih katakan kalau uh, 2.5 kamu boleh pilih 1.83. So more or less lesser but actually should be sufficient. Ya, yeah? Jangan pergi lebih. ya. Yeah? Uh, kamu pergi uh, kalau pergi uh, pressure yang sama 2.5 tapi pilih yang grade 2.5 tu. Sekejap eh, saya open annotation saya. Okay, kalau pilih yang ni okey pun boleh tapi volume tak akan dapat 300 liter mesti akan kurang daripada ni so satu hektar tak cukup kamu boleh pergi less than what you calculated dua okey kalau have to be exact okey dua uh, tiga uh, kalau kamu mampu uh, pressurize tank, tank tu pada tiga bar so berat actually kalau dua liter ni 300 liter per hektar sudah cukup ya yeah? um, So what happen if you have uh, uh, berlebihan? Okay, uh, racun yang disebut tu berlebih. So biasanya kamu akan uh, kena habiskan lah. Yeah? Kamu kena habiskan dan cuba apply for the rest of the area. Okay, boleh? Alright, thanks. Okay, so um, you can take a look yourself because uh, this is uh, just the example okay uh, so these are the uh, example of how the approach that you can do okay um, so in order to prepare the mix yeah so uh, this uh, example so you can have the tank for the liquid uh, chemical uh, which is measured and also the safety uh, uh, attire for the uh, workers yeah uh, banyak jenis baja ya uh, ataupun uh, racun ya cecair sebagainya untuk bajuhan uh, kita perlu masukkan bahan pesticide dahulu sebelum masuk air ya yeah? that's the procedure then uh, you need to measure the uh, the indication uh, the measure amount of uh, chemical that you need to be uh, added per tank or per liter of water or per hectare basis ya yeah? alright so uh, In this case, uh, to prepare the mix, so you need to know what is the uh, uh, product label says per hectare, three liter per hectare, times a volume of water. Let's say your tank maximum is five hundred liter, so you just use five hundred liter here. So spray volume, this is calibrated. Yeah, calibrated. Mana nak cari? Okay, calibrated satu hektar. Uh, walaupun tangki kamu 800 tapi kamu nak guna 300 sahaja untuk satu hektar so barat actually uh, untuk 300 liter capacity per hektar so you get around 8 liters of product only required kalau satu botol tu satu liter so 8 botol lah okey boleh kan eh? so that's the the calculation uh, like okey so if you use a mix uh, gram uh, same uh, principle But in this case, uh, you will require around uh, 8 kilograms of products per hectare basis. So the calibrated value, the one that we actually calculated beforehand, okay, we know that actually the nozzle selection and so on. Tadi, yang kita dah pilih tadi, kita tahu satu tangki tu, kita nak habiskan 300 liter per hectare basis. Okay. All right, so irrigation. Um, Later on, we, uh, kita akan masuk topik irrigation ya. Tapi uh, saya nak sentuh sikit uh, hari ini berkaitan dengan crop care, penyagaan tanaman ya. Pengairan ya. So, uh, this is the historical uh, technology uh, sejarah ya. Ketamadunan Mes Mesopotamia di Egypt ya. So, dia dah ada uh, teknik uh, pengairan, penjagaan tanaman dan sebagainya untuk menghasilkan um, makanan ya. So, I don't want to go detail. So, if you... Uh, want to take a look the historical uh, value so maybe uh, through National Geographic and so on that will be more interesting 
information. Yeah. So these are the example uh, uh, water irrigation in Iran. Yeah. Right. Um, so uh, a few systems that we uh, normally use in Malaysia. Uh, sometimes we call it uh, drip irrigation, or we call it uh, uh, we we can have also sprinkler. Okay. For sprinkler, um, uh, we use uh, is very uh, easy uh, and also cost effective. But however, you need to have uh, quite high water pressure. Okay, tekanan tinggi, uh, and also the waste of water is quite high. Basically, uh, due to uh, irrigated to non-related uh, crops. Yeah, so Basil, uh, relatively in high capital cost because of pumping. Okay operational uh, cost uh, cost for pumping water okay elliptical bin and sebagainya okay solution um, here is where we can have the uh, low pressure uh, low pressure um, uh, irrigation system by having drip irrigation system you can also uh, surface or subsurface irrigation drip irrigation uh, however subsurface perform better to reduce the surface water runoff and also uh, evapor transpiration, transpiration from the heat on the soil, yeah, and basically you supply directly to the uh, uh, root system, yeah. So there is the apps that you can download from uh, Drip Micro Wizard, yeah, uh, to estimate the uh, labor costs and also all the costs related for irrigation, yeah. So um, I think I'm going to stop here. Um, okay, some example of the. Yeah, I think mechanical video. I think that's it. Yep. All right. Any question? That's all. Right. So far, okay. That's all right, okay. So, tak ada tugasan kas untuk ni. Okay. Uh, let's okay. let's review this question together. Okay. Anyone? Um, method in applying liquid application. So uh, you can name um, uh, many type of uh, application, including uh, using human power, animal power, or mechanical power uh, coming from um, a simple knapsack sprayer, motorized blower to the tractor mounted um, uh, boom sprayer. That would be the approach in applying liquid application, okay? Or you could also have the, um, the system that embedded in the irrigation system, yeah? Irrigation together with the fertilizer and so on. However, it depends on the type of, um, of chemical that you are, uh, you are going to use, okay? Whether it's safe or not to be uh, mixed with the water or fertilizer, okay? Make sure there is no chemical reaction. Okay, that will clock, would clock the drip irrigation, for example. Okay. Um, next is what control the flow rate in the boom spray system. Okay. So this you have to go back to the factors that control that's the formula that we do for the uh, flow rate calculation. So from the formula you can see uh, what basically the the parameters variable that we we measured that we 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 consider in 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 uh, calculate in doing the flow rate calculation, including for example the pressure, okay, the nozzle uh, selection, nozzle type, nozzle target angle, okay, those are the uh, factors. Um, uh, what else? The um, the speed of the tractors is not, yeah, is not, but is the speed of tractor um, didn't change the flow rates, yeah, but it changed the uh, the output, which is uh, sprayer, the output of the sprayer, which is uniformity, okay, and also the concentration of the uh, uh, liquid, yeah. And um, next is why pre calculation or calibration and planning is necessary for spraying operation, okay. First is because uh, the cost, okay, uh, of the operation because uh, you would actually anticipate it will reflect to the uh, fill efficiency, okay? Uh, then you would actually apply it to the total amount of time 
to pay for the workers, to pay for the operation, um, and also uh, the amount of uh, chemical or water that you use is uh, also uh, would incur costs. Yeah. So those are uh, the importance of uh, why the pre-calculation and calibration is important. Yeah. Okay. Lastly, true or false, to avoid spraying overlapping. Okay, the ratio between the nozzle distance and the nozzle height from the ground must be not much, yeah? must be one to two ratio. Anyone? Siapa nak jawab? Azfa, ada, tahu saya full. True or false? Ada tak ada? Tak ada. Okay. So I leave it to you. Take a note. Um, there is a, a note talking about that, the distance between uh, the nozzle and also the, the target. So take a look the ratio, what will be like and suggest, uh, suggest the answer here. All right. So that's it uh, for today, our class. So 